Hi, my name is Jeff and I'm a medical student. This is my video response to Dr. Sears' video on fish oil. And this past summer, I'm in a pediatric surgery lab where one of the things they're looking at is the effects of omega-3 on children. So to prepare for this research, I had to first read up on omega-3. And it turns out that a lot of my family, friends, people that I care about aren't getting enough omega-3s and that they really should because it's really, really good for you. And so this past summer, I've just been telling a lot of my family, my friends, you know, you really ought to be taking omega-3s and here's why. And um, I just thought that since Dr. Sears brought it up that I should post a, a video about things that I've been learning about. And I think it's things that you probably haven't heard because I didn't even hear about these until I started reading up on it. And so hopefully you can stick around with me a little bit. So what exactly are omega-3 fatty acids good for? It's most famously known to be good for the heart. And it says here in a review that it has clearly been shown that omega-3 fatty acid supplementation provides a protective benefit in heart disease, in particular, sudden cardiac death. And that's also one of the American Heart Association recommendations, which is that you really have to make sure you're getting enough omega-3s and even through supplements if you have to. But that's only sort of the, the tip of the iceberg. I didn't realize there were so many other things that they've been good for. And I'm going to put up in the video description some links to sites that have more um, detailed explanations. But very briefly, I'm going to start off by talking about the rest of these things. Less known, but also very rigorously researched, is the effect of omega-3s on rheumatoid arthritis. And it seems that omega-3 fatty acids are really good for rheumatoid arthritis and also very good for a lot of psychiatric disorders like major depression, major depressive disorder, and schizophrenia. It says here in this review, uh, in addition, many psychiatric disorders, particularly schizophrenia and MDD, which is major depressive disorder, have shown positive results when supplementation has been used as an adjunct to standard pharmacotherapy. And it says here that rheumatoid arthritis is another disease entity that has been proven to benefit from this nutrition intervention. Just by the way, this review that I'm quoting is from the Department of Surgery and Vascular Biology program at Harvard Medical School. So I think it's a good one. The reason why I mentioned that this review article was from a very good program at Harvard Medical School was just to let you know that this is within the realms of me mainstream medicine in that I know it sounds kind of weird and maybe it sounds like I'm selling snake oil or something. I remember when I was telling my dad about this, he was kind of very surprised, very skeptical and saying that, Jeff, you know, you ought to not exaggerate. It's not good to exaggerate. Um, because ultimately what you're saying is that fish oil can help prevent and all these problems and help with curing a lot of problems and that just sounds really over the top. But I want to let you know that everything that I'm talking about here is within uh, the boundaries of rigorous, uh, well-researched science. And so hopefully that will be helpful because oftentimes if you haven't heard about this it does sound really weird. I know I was, I thought it was really weird when I heard about this for the first time. The diseases that omega-3s have most definitively shown to be good for are diseases like heart disease, rheumatoid arthritis, um, schizophrenia, and major depression. But there are also a lot of clinical trials and epidemiological studies showing suggestions of benefit for diseases like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, psoriasis, lupus, asthma, multiple sclerosis, migraines, and in these individual articles you find studies showing, for example, that when moms eat more um, DHA, which is um, fatty acid, omega-3 fatty acid during pregnancy, this is good for their infants in terms of their performance on problem solving. And there's another paper that was just published in Nature, Nature Medicine, saying that increased dietary intake of omega-3 fatty acids reduces pathological retinal angiogenesis, which the retina is part of the eye and omega-3s have also been suggested to show benefit for the eyes, um, for the livers, for babies who are on parental nutrition, um, and even for diabetes patients. So this article I found from Diabetes Care, which is the article from the Association, American Association of Diabetes, and it says here that there are some expectations of benefits and a reasonable certainty of no harm. 
if you take omega-3 fatty acids, meaning that omega-3 omega fatty acids has very low risk for side effects. Of course, you want to go ahead and make sure, um, check this with your doctor, make sure that you're not going to get any side effects. But for the most part, omega-3s have been shown to be very safe because it's fish oil. After sharing this information with my family and my friends, they usually ask me, how much should I be taking? And I think, or they ask me, should I be taking them at all? And I think it's important to note that the standard American diet is really, really low on omega-3 fatty acids compared to the Mediterranean diet or the Japanese diet. And so even if you're young or relatively young, you probably have really low omega-3 fatty acid levels. And it's probably a really, really good idea to up them. Whether or not through fish or through fish oil supplementation, that's a really hard question. And I don't really know the answer to that, but I think it's it might be a good reference point to look at some of the studies that have talked about certain issues. So, for example, if I'm concerned about getting heart disease, then I can follow up on those studies and see what the, the researchers used in those studies in terms of if they were looking at fish or fish oil supplementation. And the nice thing to note about those studies is that usually they're really concerned about safety profiles and that fish oil supplements, you can make sure that that particular supplement that you're using for that study does not contain mercury, PCBs, dioxin. And if you need references on how to find more information about this, I can send you those references um, because that might be helpful. I think that's all I had to say for this clip. If there are any more questions, please look at the video description. I'm going to try to answer the comments. And also, if you have questions about dosages and more questions about future studies, um, please email me and I'll send you the references that you can go over with your doctors. Um, definitely, like I said, I'm just a medical student, so this is not medical advice, but I think it was something that I just wanted to share with you that I learned with my uh, professors and I want to share with you. So, thanks.